Hey everyone, Reflected here. And today, I'd like to tell you about the journey that lies ahead of you if you want to become a virtual Tomcat pilot. In Speed and Angels, my upcoming campaign with Paco Chirici, you go through the F-14 rag in such a realistic way that has never been possible in a flight sim before. Let me show you the challenges you face. So, in real life, future Tomcat pilots had to go through primary, intermediate, and advanced flight training. And then, once they got their wings of gold, they were assigned to an aircraft type and a fleet replacement squadron, also known as the RAG. The old name was Replacement Air Group. This is where you mastered the Tomcat and became a combat-ready fleet pilot. The RAG training lasted around 10 months, but Paco and I squeezed everything into 10 missions. First, you'll learn to fly the Tomcat, then you'll learn how to fight in it, and lastly, you'll need to pass your carrier qualifications both day and night, otherwise you're useless to the Navy. So let's have a look at the syllabus, shall we? So after countless tasks and exams as well as simulator sessions, you'll first strap into a Tomcat on your familiarization flight. In real life, the student goes in the back seat first, the instructor pilot demonstrates everything, then they land, swap places and go up again. Why they swap places, you ask? Because the F-14 doesn't have flight controls in the backseat, that's why. In the campaign, you'll begin with the second part straight away, because it's not possible to have you sit in the backseat while the AI flies the jet through complex maneuvers. I can't do that in the mission editor. So you'll go up with Paco in the backseat, and he'll guide you through some basic maneuvers and handling the Tomcat. It sounds like an easy lesson, I mean, who can do a loop in a Tomcat or a 360 turn? Pfft, please. Well, to do a proper one, by the book, one that makes Paco happy, will challenge you no matter how much of a hotshot you think you are. It will be a very humbling experience, I assure you, and a real eye-opener, a complete game-changer for virtual Tomcat pilots. Then, as of the second hop, you'll fly with an instructor Rio. Paco will be your lead, and you'll learn how to fly proper formation, parade, cruise, tax spread. Then you'll practice section maneuvers that will need to be second nature in combat. At the end, you'll go to the tanker, and Paco will teach you how to refuel. No more excuses for skipping AAR. The third mission is pretty similar, except it takes place at night. Don't worry. If you pass mission 2, this one will be okay too. The laws of physics aren't affected by light, you know. In mission 4, you'll practice basic intercept runs and geometry against Paco, learning how to get the right amount of lateral separation and turning room. Then, you'll detach for some LAT, low altitude tactics training. Chig, your instructor Rio, will guide you through this. You'll learn how to fly the Tomcat safely at very low altitudes, 450 knots at a mere 100 feet above the hot desert floor. And then you'll practice the mechanics of low pop attacks. Starting with Mission 5, you'll start focusing on weapons employment. Mission 5 is air to ground. You'll head out to the dog bone range as a section, and Paco will teach you how to deliver different weapon types. You'll fly precise, coordinated patterns, in sync with your lead, and that will require good airmanship, a lot of attention and concentration from your part. This is so not a do whatever you like, shoot stuff and have fun campaign. Mission 6 is a 1v1, where you'll practice basic fighter maneuvers. It begins with a snapshot drill, then a defensive and offensive perch, then two abeam sets where you'll learn the difference between a one circle and the two circle fight, and you'll finish up with a butterfly set. You'll turn a lot of jet fuel into G's during this one. Mission 7 is a 2v2, 
where you'll fly three intercept runs against two F5s simulating MiG-21 fish beds. The intercept's getting more complex each time. You'll learn how to shoot Fox 3s and Fox 1s on timeline, and then get into a knife fight with those Tigers. Mission 8 is the same, except it's a 4v4, and you'll fly as a division of Tomcats against four F-16s simulating Su-27 flankers. These scenarios are going to be even more complex than in the previous mission. The final two missions are probably the most important ones for naval aviators. Your training so far doesn't matter one bit if you can't pass your carrier qualifications both day and night. So you'll take off from Nellis and head out west to the Roosevelt. In real life, 10 day traps and 6 night traps are required to qual, but in game, you can finish the mission after the first one, only that's gonna be graded. Optionally, you can go through all of them if you want to play realistically, but you'll have to really nail that first trap. If the LSO is not happy, you're out, campaign's over. Then, if you qual, the rag is over but the campaign isn't. We'll take you on your first deployment into a highly realistic war zone for six further missions. According to the story, China conducts cyber attacks against US nuclear power plants, then overruns the Philippines and then the Marianas, and it's up to the USS Theodore Roosevelt and the task group to take the islands back. In each mission, remembering your training will decide between virtual life and death. It's gonna be your ultimate test. There's no grading in those missions, they're successful as long as you land back on the boat. But that you have to do. You join the Navy, not the Air Force. What's special about the Speed and Angels campaign is that, except for Mission 1, all RAG missions are made up of several mission files. This means that a new mission file will be loaded for each exercise. Each task starts in active pause, so Paco can explain everything in detail. The whiteboard with his own drawings will also be displayed on screen, just like in real life Paco would use a whiteboard in the classroom. When the briefing is over and you're ready, you unpause the mission and perform the task. Then, once complete, you can use the F10 radio menu to decide whether you want to repeat it and practice more or move on to the next one. Some of you may not like this as it breaks the flow of the missions. I agree with that, but without this solution, this campaign would never have been possible. Here's why. 1. These tasks require the utmost precision. Now, the end of each one is quite random and dynamic though. I can't be sure where the AI will be, let alone the player. Will the player follow the instructions precisely? Will the player end up out of formation, how much fuel will the player and the AI have left? There's so many variables and I, I just can't build a precision task onto such a dynamic and random outcome of a previous task. It's just not possible in DCS. The mission editor is not that flexible. 2. The DCS AI The DCS AI has lots of limitations. If you overwhelm it with tasks to do, like this campaign does, it's prone to just give up at some point, ignore the scripts and fly home, or simply run out of fuel prematurely. Even making it follow through one complex exercise in a fail-safe way required my best effort as a mission builder. Making it follow through every task continuously throughout a single mission? Well, that's never gonna happen. On the plus side, this gives the player a lot of flexibility and the opportunity to practice which is kind of the point of a training campaign. Some of the tasks were repeated several times in real life. Now it's up to you to decide whether you've understood the instructions and consider yourself proficient already, or you want to give it another go or two, without having to refly the entire mission. Later on, you can also revisit any of the tasks directly, without having to go through the cold start and departure again. I think that's pretty cool for a training campaign. Some of you may ask, 
Can I skip the startup or takeoff or departure? The only answer that wouldn't come across as too sarcastic would be no. Listen, every second of even the most boring parts is equally important. You practice startups, rendezvous, formation flying, following ATC procedures, landing patterns. No one can be too good at these. And honestly, they're pretty rewarding to get right. They're all vital parts of being a military pilot. And if you don't like this, that's cool, but then why are you flying a study level campaign in a study level sim in the first place? Another reasonable question is, can I skip the instructions when I repeat the task? Well, the game reloads the same mission file and it doesn't know whether it's your first or second or third attempt. I could only add the skip option by doubling the number of mission files from 63 to 126 and thus committing maintenance suicide. Just so that the player can attempt to fly a task that they'd failed for the first time without actually listening to why they failed. Nah, sorry. By the way, if you use time acceleration, the instructions take all of 10 seconds maximum. Remember, you're in active pause. But if you need to repeat the task, you probably need to listen to those instructions too. At the end of each task, your grade will be displayed on screen along with some improvement points, but that's going to be the topic of another video. Alright, I hope you found this interesting and you're psyched to fly this campaign to become a combat-ready fleet virtual naval aviator. Make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell for further updates. See ya!